So in this video, we're going to talk about the third of our uh, fluids concepts, which is the concept of volume flow rate. And volume flow rate essentially tells us how much of a given substance is going through any, any one point at a specific time. So let me explain what I mean by that. That's a little bit confusing, I can see. Uh, so let's say we have a pipe, right? We have a pipe and we have some fluids flowing through the pipe. And at any given point, the question is, how much uh, of the fluid is flowing through the pipe at any given time? So what we can do, the way that we figure this out is, first of all, we want to know the velocity of the fluid, right? We want to know the velocity of how fast is the fluid traveling. And then the other thing we want to know is we want to know the cross-sectional area of the fluid, right? We want to know how, uh, how wide or how big is this pipe? or uh, this vessel or whatever it is, right? And so when we take those two values and we multiply them by each other, we multiply an area by a velocity. Area is, we know, is, in, uh, is measured in meters squared, and velocity is measured in meters per second. And when we multiply those by each other, we get uh, meters cubed per second, which is a measure of volume over time. Right, so we know uh, what volume flows through an area per second. So uh, the equation for this, for volume flow rate, is Q, which is volume flow rate, and that's measured in meters cubed per second, equals, equals velocity, oh, let, me, uh, let me fix that, the velocity of the given fluid, which is of course measured in meters per second, times the cross-sectional area of the pipe or of the vessel or whatever it is. So that would be measured in meters squared. So what are some practical applications of this for the purposes of the MCAP? Well, one of the practical applications of this is uh, that as area increases, assuming volume flow stays the same, which let's talk about, let's use as an example, let's use the human body. In the human body, volume flow flow rate is the same because if we think of the human body as a given circuit, uh, in general, for any in the short term, uh, the same amount of blood that's flowing through this area is going to also be flowing through this area, and it's going to be flowing through this area. So volume flow is going to be the same. So if if the the amount of blood that flows through is is constant in a short period in a short period of time, um, what that means is as the area increases the velocity decreases. And we know that's true um, because, for example, arteries, arteries are fairly wide, right? But the total cross-sectional area in the body of the, of the arteries is actually fairly small. The, 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 the highest cross-sectional area in the body is when we get to the capillaries because although the capillaries are all in, individually, they're very small, we have so many of them that the cross-sectional area uh, of the capillaries is going to end up being very big, the total cross-sectional area. So uh, the way that I can, the way that I can uh, symbolize this, the way that I can depict this is we have an artery, very big artery, right? Let's say it's cross-sectional area. If we measured out its cross-sectional area, it would look like this, right? Now it's one artery, let's say. Let's say this is the aorta, right? Uh, so although it's one artery and although it's very huge, it's only one. Now what we do is we make a bunch of smaller arterioles, let's say, I uh, want to, we branch out into a bunch of smaller ones. And although these are individually smaller, if we total them up, cross-sectional area would be bigger. And then when we, met, when, we, uh, when we branch out even further to a bunch of, let's draw out a bunch of small capillaries. Although each one is tiny, has a very, very tiny cross-sectional area. When we total them up, the cross-sectional area is going to be very big. So although this is a physics lesson, it's not a biology lesson, uh, the MCAT always wants to relate these concepts to uh, the biology, how the biology uh, is involved. And so uh, very often these types of questions will be asked in a biological context, not in a just, a, you know, in a, in a vacuum, in a physical context. Um, so based on that, uh, where is the velocity going to be higher, highest? Uh, is the velocity going to be highest uh, when the area, when the total cross-sectional area is smaller or big? So based on this, uh, based on this equation, over here, 
we know that the velocity is going to be highest. It's going to be very high here. And the velocity is going to be much lower here. Uh, and intu intuitively, uh, that makes sense. We know that the arteries generally pump blood very fast. And we know that the capillaries, because the, the blood has to undergo gas exchange, the, the blood very, very much slows down when it gets to the level of the capillaries. So from a biological, from an intuitive standpoint, this, uh, this concept makes sense, conceptually speaking. And the math, uh, the math bears it out. Math supports it. So uh, on the MCAT, you might see a question like this, uh, volume, flow rate, velocity, area. You're going to get two, typically you're going to get two of the three variables. You may need to convert a little bit between variables to ultimately uh, make the equation work. But uh, this is how the equation works. This is how you solve a problem like this.